Hello, everyone, again. <laughs> I'm very sorry about the first uh, debacle. We just had no sound. We've done nothing else. Nothing has changed. And it would appear we now have sound. So just the vagaries of the internet or Facebook or whatever. So I'm sorry about that. So, you know, it was going to be, a, well, I was going to try and make it a relatively short one. But um, we'll still carry on and do do what we can do. So yesterday, um, it was suggested that we make today's spread about steampunk, which is right out of my wheelhouse. I'm not, I don't know anything really about steampunk, to be honest, um, or didn't. I've spent the evening and this morning looking at what steampunk is, and it would appear to be some sort of Victorian science fiction, that sort of thing. Jones, you and Charles Convivia says that's better. <laughs> Sorry, guys, and thanks for sticking with us. Thank you so much. Um, I hope Dorothy comes back, as she was the one that alerted us to this. So all I've done while I was waiting, I've just gessoed, white gessoed these pages. Uh, so the someone was asking, Alison, I think, was asking yesterday, what what's gesso? What, why do you gesso? Um, and basically, if you don't gesso, when you put things like we do, paint and glue and whatever, it just goes straight onto the page and gets sucked in. Um, so if you want to move paint around or anything, you can't do it because it just lands where it lands and that's kind of that. Whereas if you gesso it, you've got, you can move it around a bit. You've got a bit more freedom. It sort of protects the page. And if you, are, if you get to a stage where you think, right, I don't want to spoil that. And, you know, I want to put some more colours on, but I don't want them to mix with what I've got on already. Then that's the time when you use transparent gesso. Put gesso over the whole thing and it's kind of like a save as. Those of you that follow Ginger Cook, you'll know she refers to save as. When, when she does it, it's heating it because it's acrylic ink. But for us, it's putting transparent gesso over it. And then anything that's under there is safe. You can't move it around anymore. So that's kind of, uh, it's, it has a different meaning in fine art, but we don't, we're not doing that, so that doesn't bother us. Right, I'm going to introduce you today, although some of you may very well know about these already. Uh, these pigments that are called Brusho are made by a company called Colorcraft, and they're from Sheffield. They originally set off making these for schools, uh, school kids to play with, because they're completely non-toxic, they're safe, you know, the and they are safe that way. They're not toxic. But I'll tell you, they're not safe if you spill it. Or They are so pigmented. So if you drop this a tiny speck on your carpet, go and get water, it dilutes it, and it's not what you want to do. So be careful with them. That's all I'll say. I'll just give you just the quickest of little um, demos as to what they do. Um, because I've made mine up into little spritzers to use today. Um, these are just the Ranger Mini Misters. Um, but I'll just show you what they do. Um, let's try a colour that's really going to show up. Let's try turquoise then. There's a shocker. And you really only do need a little bit, so I'll just get... Um, I'm just going to get a palette knife that somehow has already got turquoise on the end. Anybody will think that I like turquoise. Well, I do. Can't help it. Right, so just get a wee little bit on the end of a spoon or something. And tap it down onto the page. And you think, what are you on about? There's nothing there. Well, just wait, peeps. Just wait. So there we are. It's a very, very light coat. Always, always, always please put the lid back on these um, for fear of accident. And let's just have a look and see what happens. Water. Yeah, it's just water. Look at that. And you saw what was there. There was hardly anything there. You can keep going if you like, you know, spread around the page, get a straw. Drip it, drop it, whatever you like. Um, and even after all that, when it dries, you probably will still have some crystals in it, which you just knock off. But isn't that gorgeous? And all from those crystals. 
So that's, I use brush show, or I used to use brush shows quite a lot, actually. Um, I'm just going to tuck this off. I mean, even that's gorgeous. So yeah, highly pigmented crystals, or crystals of pigment, I guess you could say. So that's uh, that. I'll show that in the bin. So I've used two colours. I used uh, sandstone and yellow ochre. Thank you. Um, and I've put them. I've diluted them and put them into. Uh, I've had these a long time now, so I'm not saying this is the right price. But I think yeah, there's eight colours in there, and they were ten pounds. But um, back in the day, Colourcraft never used to have a website because they didn't really sell to the public. Um, as I say, just to schools and what have you. So you had to ring them up and order them and give your card details. But now they do have a website. They do other really interesting mediums and stuff like that, which we'll look into as we get further on with our um, art journal. So I have uh, just sold this, so now I'm just going to spritzer it. I'm just going to give it a shake to make sure those crystals are... Um, uh, diluted and just I'm not putting texture on this page today and we'll see where we get to so that's one color this is the other color you see they're much more manageable in a spray in a spritzer and you make them up strong or weak or whatever you want to do I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just blot that off a bit. I think it, if it wasn't that I was doing this live, I'd probably leave that to dry, actually, because I quite like it. But let's just blot some off. If you're organised, you'd have another journal here that you'd be blotting this off onto. And then you'd have another background. So there we are. It's come out quite weak. Too weak for my liking, actually. A bit too weak. And dry it. I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow ochre onto there. I'm just going to make sure I've got all that turquoise off there, otherwise it carries. That's the other thing that it does. That's a bit too much. So I'm just going to tap it off. And it's, it turns out this you really don't want to shake. Believe me, it'll be really good. I'm sticking stuff on this page, so you know it's not the be all and end all. But. Oh, that's a jolly good idea. Believe me, now you know why, why it's paid. <laughs> 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 that was that, that was just a fix it croaking in the corner. Right, so we've got that on. We'll just give it a little spritzer. I mean this is yellow ochre and it's pretty green I would say. But you know, hey ho. Doesn't really matter. That is the thing with brush oil, you do get lots of different <laughs> see if I can trap that before it comes out. Uh, lots of different pigments that obviously go to make up the colour that they're describing, which makes it really, really nice. You know, the red's got purple and blue in it, and um, you, you get to know them as you use them. Let's see what's going on here. Ooh, ooh, I see. I see. I'll just dry that one. Bash it around a bit with a heat. This is when it's good to have two art journals on the doll because you put something like this really wet medium on um, and you leave it to dry while you're cracking on with your other one. But we're only doing one, although I do have my auxiliary one. 
um, which I haven't put anything in for a couple of days actually. So this quite sort of chartreuse green was uh, not my intention, but it's what we've got, so we'll work with it. I don't really have uh, an overriding plan for today, which will come as an old surprise to you. Um, I don't know, it just seems to flow better when you just do it, rather than planning everything. Sort of intuitive. Hi Nancy, a bit. It's called Brusho and it's by a company called Colourcraft, who are a British, British company. Um, I'm not sure if you can get it in America, but perhaps if you find out whether you can or you can't, you could let us know. I think there's a similar product called Pixie Dust. Alright, oh, okay. Um, I can't remember if I've made who makes it, but oh, right. it's a similar thing, I think. So actually, that's turned out really quite nicely. I quite like that. Um, so the idea with my background is that I'm going to sort of stick... I just printed this off. I think it's from the Graphics Fairy, so it's um, copyright free. And that's an interesting site. If you're not aware of the Graphics Fairy, um, try and familiarise yourself with it if you can. They do have a pay a subscription um, part of the site, which it's really cheap. And I was a member there for ages. Um, but I'm not any longer, and they still have loads of free images. So it's worth going on, putting in what you're looking for, and see see what happens. Uh, graphicsfairy.com So I'm just going to tear my chap out of here, my steampunk man. This is just an ordinary photocopier paper. I don't know if any of you have tried painting, uh, painting, painting onto tissue. Uh, that's really nice for decoupage actually. It's a bit of a faff because you've got to put the tissue onto a carrier paper, onto a sheet of photocopier paper and mas you know, put masking tape on the edge that leads through first. But um, you've then got a sheet of decoupage tissue so you can do with as you wish. So I'm just tearing the edge off, off this because I don't like when you can see the edge. I much prefer a more raggedy finish. Alison Young says she's on the Graphic Fairy and pays a subscription now. It's fantastic. Yeah, every Monday you get this email from the Graphics Fairy with what the uh, what the topic is for that week. And it, you know, it could be anything. could be flowers, could be letters, could be anything. There's loads, loads and loads. You'll never run out. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to tear him round here and use that bit up there. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I can have two separate bits here. Let's, let's do that. I'm not that fussed about crumpling him or getting wrinkles in him when I attach him. I'm not, it's not, I don't care really particularly. So I'm just going to bring that in a wee bit from the edge, like so. And him, he's going to be a wee bit from the edge on the bottom. So then we're starting to build our background up a little bit. So this will go on with just a Mod Podge, ordinary Mod Podge. Or um, fairy chic emporium matte finish. We do. Hello, Caroline. Cullingham. Yeah, Cullingham. She uh, showed us a picture of her beautiful cat when we when I was showing everybody the animal uh, portraits that I do. Oh, yeah.
I think this might wrinkle, but I'm not that fussed, you know. It just adds to the texture. I'm going to put him in from the edge a little bit, but not that much. Oh, he's gone down effortlessly. Great. Obviously likes it there. That's nice. That's becoming quite a nice background. It's going to move him out of the way. Well, let's stick some more podge on this. Um, for those of you who are sort of putting off starting to art journal because you haven't actually got a journal, um, that's no excuse. <laughs> a lot of people who do art journals use old books, um, which you can find in charity shops, sometimes libraries uh, sell them for, you know, just a few coppers really. Um and what you would do in that situation is stick two or three pages together with print or something like that. Um, and then that will give you a, a good sturdy page to work on. And don't forget to gesso them and you'll be fine. Well, look at that. It went on with, <laughs> without so much as a wrinkle. Just when I was expecting there to be a wrinkle as well. Right, so let me show you what else I've got to play with today. I've got these um, sort of like labels, really. Catch it as it passes. Uh, and I quite like this one in the center, so I might put that one somewhere. I've also got this, which is really quite nice. It certainly is. And that, well, that might be just a bit too much, but this is quite nice there. I quite like that. Um, let me just quickly cut out, well, tear it out actually, it's better. Just tear this out and see where we can put it. So I've gone from last night not having anything or not knowingly having anything um, to do with steampunk to, um, you know, printing out images. My beloved Mr. Fixit has been printing me out some stencils. We also worked in a really interesting, um, I'll call it medium this morning, and that was shrinkies, shrinkles? Yeah, shrinkles. You know what I mean, don't you? Paint on it, draw on it, put it in the oven and it sucks in. Because um, I wanted something with a bit of substance to it. So we did, we did these. They are shrinkies. I mean, when we put them in, they're ginormous. Um, there you go, you can see them there. So they were nice. They were good good fun to do. I enjoyed doing them. I was surprised by how quickly they, they cooked. <laughs> it was, you know, less than five minutes. Okay, so we've got this. Oh, I've torn it in half. What a silly, silly old bird. Delivery. Yeah, of course it was delivered. So that's quite nice there, but I think I'm going to have quite a lot going on in the centre anyway. So I think that will go nicely there because my words for the day are. Time flies. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Um, time flies. That's our motto message for today. So, you know, I'm quite happy to have time there and a hot air balloon here. It all goes quite well. So let's see how I can shuffle these around on this paper page to make the best of to make the best of it. I don't really want to cut anything off those because I quite like them as they are. So I'll put that in there. Yeah, I quite like that. I don't dislike that. Do I love it? Hmm, that's the question. 
It's not really keeping with the other theme, is it? It's a bit too blue. This one? Yeah. Yeah. But I do like the cogs on it. Maybe we just going to make a black and white and see clear it up. And some skeleton will alter it. Yeah, just scan that and print it out. It doesn't, not, not even, in, yeah, in sepia. Brilliant. Right, so the other things that I've got to play with are, courtesy, of course, of uh, Mr. Fixit, is this lovely um, stencil that's all gears, and it's gorgeous. It's a lovely stencil. And that would actually fit in quite well there. It's just missing his face. That would go quite well there. And as I showed you before, I've got these shrinky dinkies. Um, obviously a clock face, but it's kind of missing its face a bit. And that one. So these are all things that I managed to accumulate without going out the house. <laughs> this is really nice and perfect for what we want today. It was in that box of stuff that I showed you the other day. Uh, I went through it again with an eye to um, steampunk. And there wasn't masses in it, but there was something. So this is... Um, well, you tell me, is it is it a bee? Is it a moth? I think it might be a moth because I think there's something to do with steampunk and moths, but uh, I'm not overly sure about that one. I don't like that one either, actually, so I'm going to lose that one. Uh, and then I've got some tiny little uh, clock faces that might fit in there. A light bulb, in case I have a light bulb moment, which is doubtful. Uh, and a key. I think that's probably all that we need today. So I've got those two, and Mr. Fix it scanning me in that uh, sepia job. So, oh yeah, the other thing I've got is an octopus. Octopus, you say? Mm, octopus, I say. Because apparently, steampunk people like octopuses, and that is apparently the plural of octopus, um, because they're water driven. If you know what I mean? They, when they want to move somewhere, they sort of get hold of a whole load of water and then squirt it out, propelling them in the direction they want to go. So, you know, not only are we doing art here, we're learning things. We're learning. So I could put that down there, I guess. I do want that time in, and I do want this because it, it's about flying. The background is really nice. That's a bit predictable with that there. We are quite like that there. And then I could have that over the top of it, which would be nice. Perhaps I ought to go over these in rub and buff. I don't know. I'm not going to include the octopus after all that lesson about it because um, it's just too thick. It would be too thick on my page. So when I come to do the next one, I'd have to contend with this sticking up here. So that's not going on our page, but the rest, I think, will be all right. I mean, look at this key. Can you see it? It's made up of cogs, gears. It's it's perfect for our cause today. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, I still don't think you can see it, but take my word for it. It's all gears, cogs, and the like. Right, then. So I just have to decide where this is going. Come on, you know, make a decision, for heaven's sake. I quite like that there, and I quite like that there. So let, let's let's just do it. I'm just going to use Prit. Prit, the non-sticky sticky stuff. Do you remember that advert? I don't know why I ever made them think it wasn't sticky, non-sticky bit. Because if you get it on your table, it's there forever and a day. So that's going there. And that's, that's lovely. It looks like a page from a book, which looks really nice. And then our time flies, which is kind of, at the moment, the only colour that we've got in this page. Um, so I may introduce some red at some stage, just to pick up on this. So I'm putting that just over there. So we're just building, just building and building. That's all we're doing. Um, now let's have a look where I want this stencil to go. I had it perfect before, didn't I? It was just missing his head. Was it there? 
Moving, moving. If I go to there, am I missing his head? Yeah. Yeah, I've got his hat, but I'm not worried about that so much. I just don't want to miss his face. That must be mighty near to the top. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think we're all right there. I think we are. So, what colour to do that in? It's a big block of colour, isn't it? Whatever I choose. How about copper? Do you think copper? Actually, I think I'm going to leave that big stencil out. I think it's too big for this page. It's it's swamping it, and I don't like it. So I'm going to use the smaller three. And I'm going to use copper. It's a golden fluid, fluid acrylic. You can use any copper that you've got. I, I'm not recommending that you use golden for this art journal because it's too darned expensive. And any of the cheaper paints, craft paints, as, as they're disparagingly called, um, are perfect, perfect for this. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out onto a piece of paper. And I'm going to get a sponge from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> as Mr. Fix is flying by <laughs> Ken. Uh, yeah, Dobber would be good a moon maker excellent for the job I think if I make these in copper they'll sort of go with these ones better oh, that's got steampunk written on it how clever is that that's a Mr. Fix it touch thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Right, so I'll just use the smallest one here and um, just pick up some paint, offload it. So you don't want too much on it. And off we go. You don't want too much on it, but you do want some. Mighty difficult painting with no paint. See, when I'm organised, just to fix it, doesn't have to run around the house like a lunatic because I've got everything that I want sorted. But with this, I just... With the art journal, I just find it doesn't work. It doesn't work if I sort things out. It's kind of got to be from the heart, really. Art from the heart. Of course, you can use a stencil brush or, you know, use whatever you've got to apply the, to apply this. Stencil brush is the best for sure. Right, let's have a look and see what that looks like. Maybe just a little bit more in the centres. Okay, there we are. That looks nice, doesn't it? That looks very nice. Oh, not from that bit up there. Never mind, we'll catch that uh, later on. So really, I just um, I'll just wait for this piece that's coming before I can really put anything more on. I did get some of these uh, tulip crystals. Uh, ju I just thought that if I put them round on the cogs, they might look uh, like nuts and bolts, but I'll try that later. And I also have this thing. When you see this, you will want it. It's Krylon webbing spray, and it's 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 great. It just comes out like a web, um, which I'll show you. And it's the very last thing that needs to go on, actually. Not like me to be without words, is it? Just there's nothing very much to um, talk about, really.
want that P to go down somewhere where we can see it. Somewhere like that, perhaps. I think. I think Mr. Fix it's sending that to the printer. Are you? Yes. Yeah, excellent. So we just have to amuse ourselves for a couple of minutes. I think that's going to turn out. We'll That'll be fine, I'm sure. I'm pondering the idea of actually colouring the centre of those in or putting a ring in the centre. Would that fit in there? Um, would that fit in there? Yeah, probably. I don't know what would fit in that one. That's lovely, thank you very much. Smaller. Yeah, it's, a bit, it, it's a bit big. It doesn't matter, look, we'll move on to something else. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm absolutely going to have to put that in there because it's too, it's too much copper. And then I'm going to have to use this or that, that, as a stamp. Yeah, okay, I'll use that as a stamp. So what colour do I want in the middle? Probably black, do you think? Probably, most probably. Find my paint. Right, so I, don't, I only need a tiny bit of black. I'm just going to paint the the top side of this golden bottle. So we've got a stamp. If you've got a stamp, <laughs> use it. <laughs> I haven't, so I'm having to make do. So I want that in the centre. About there. That's better. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. So, what have I got that's smaller then that I can use for the little one? Mm -mm. How about the top of these Rangers cups? That would work. That would work. That would work. Oh. It's obviously a ridge around the top. Can you tell them I made the cobs with the shrink stuff? Oh yes, I can. Yeah, that's lovely. That's perfectly grand. Thank you. Um, I, I can't get any more of that in there because there's obviously a ring around it. But I'm I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, yes, that is me saying it doesn't have to be perfect. Right, Alison, the Shrinky Dinkies. There are several different brands of this. Some of them are called Shrinkables. Um, there'll be other stuff around that just more generic, but these are called Shrinkles. And what you do is you get a sheet of it, which feels like cartridge paper. It's got a shiny side and it's got a rougher side to it. And you draw on it, whatever it is, or you can print them through an inkjet. We didn't, we haven't tried it through the laser printer yet because it works, it shrinks with heat. And as you know, laser printers produce heat when they print. So I can imagine all sorts of nastiness going on if we put that through the laser. So we actually put them through the uh, inkjet. And all we did was... We found an image online that we liked, which was these cogs. We printed it onto the shrinkables through the inkjet printer. And, it, 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 you know, they're, they're quite big. I mean, this one was that sort of size, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you put them in put them in the oven on a baking tray with some tin foil on. Uh, what temperature is it? Uh, 175 centigrade. Yeah, 175 centigrade. Mark 3. <laughs> it's not, is it? It's more than that. It's the oh, gas mark 3, sorry. Uh, and you have to watch for them contorting and twisting. And then when they lie flat on the baking tray, they're done. Get them out. Well, we watched and we didn't see any contorting or twisting, I must be honest. But we looked away for a minute and when we looked back, 
it shrunk, it shrunk to this size. I really wasn't expecting them to shrink quite that much. Um, but then, of course, you've got all the detail. You know, if, if this had been a really intricate thing, either a drawing or something, you know, picture you downloaded, you've still got all the detail there, but it's kind of in miniature. And I like these ones. I've used ones before that are a bit spongy, but these ones, they feel like, um, you know, the chipboard things that you get that, um, to put on your art journal. That's what they feel like. They feel like chipboard for all the world. And I don't think you could bend it. I think it might snap, possibly, or just simply not bend. Um, you have to remember that the edges will come out white as well. And there you go. You can bend it when it's soft, of course, if you want it to put it round something. Yes, when you first get it out of the oven, if you want it to be round to go around a bottle or a cup or something like that, pliable. it's pliable then. But do it right then when you get it out of the oven because, well, if you if you haven't and you need to do it again, shove it back in the oven, warm it up, get it lying flat, and then do it as soon as it comes out. But the the nice little things, I quite like them, actually. I wonder if that would fit in there. Did I use this before? No, I didn't. I was going to get a bit of black on there. My love message. On, yeah. Oh, for Mr. Fix, it's love message. Which, which, you know, I do appreciate, but I need the thing. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, I do. Your priorities. Oh, that didn't work out awfully well. I think it's because uh, it's not flat. Oh, yeah, that's looking nice. Yeah, that's all right. I quite like that. I'll wipe that off. Oh, it's love message is still there. Look, I love Fiona. Power of Sharpie. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Right, so let's just rip this little one out here. I've got my glue gun on already um, to stick on the the metal elements that I want to put on. I've got some charcoal out to go around the edges and uh, darken them down. But really, this isn't going to be a, a, a long job today. Well, it would have been shorter still if the sound had worked. Uh, so, so did you cut them out before the oven? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Right, so how about that bit going there? Yeah, I think so. And then I've got these to mess around with. That looks quite nice there. And I've got these elements, which I'm kind of fancying putting a whole lot on. I still like the idea of that being there. And I don't know. Maybe I don't need all of these. Come on, of course you do. I've got this little one here. It might go in there actually. That's going to make that page quite thick though. I'm dying to see what you lot make of doing steampunk because, as I say, it's absolutely not in my wheelhouse at all. I'm just going to stick that over the uh, over that centre of the page. Over there. Right. Well, I've got to stick something on somewhere, so let's... How about I use those stencils again? Just down here. Just two of them down there. Yeah, quite like that idea. I'm going to do them in copper again, despite the fact. What did I do with the copper thing? Here it is. Despite the fact I've then got to find something to make the centres with, but I quite like the copper. Do 
show me. Yeah, that, that's brought the page to life, I, th I, I think. I really do think. Now I need whatever it was. It was the top of this, wasn't it? I've kind of run out of black here a bit. That's probably enough. That was that one, wasn't it? The middle one. I'm sure, I, I bet my bottom dollar you've got something that's slightly better to use. Um, I need my black out Oh, here it is. Thought it was going to do, Lolly. That's just black acrylic, um, in case you're wondering. Nothing special at all. So let's just try and stamp that a bit. Yeah, that's lovely. I love it when it gets that sort of look, not quite there look. <laughs> a bit like me. What did I use for the other one? Oh, oh this, wasn't it? The top of that, actually. Yeah, that looks nice, I think. Okay, so let's get on with putting our elements together now then. So I've got that and these, which I'd quite like to put on this page. Oh, that with that, definitely. I thought it might be better actually if I put that bit save it being so bulky for the next page um i've got this little clock here i could put that there let's just drop that there for the moment and then i've got this key okay it's here but it's just i've discounted it just didn't this was another shrinkable thing that we did um but actually the paint came off, so uh, I'm discounting that now. So what does that look like, that page? Looks all right? Looks okay? Need a bit more colour around here, I think. So before I stick them on, I'm just going to give it a bit of, give the page a bit of colour. It's looking slightly insipid. That spray. Yeah, the finish. That's the finish. I've shown it to him already. Um, I'm so tempted to go for blue. I'm going for blue. This is my art journey. I'll go for a blue that's not turquoise. How about that? Like this one, for example. That's not turquoise. <laughs> Look, my shirt's turquoise. It's a mile away. <laughs> Oh, I know what else I've got. What else I have? I have the negative parts of those stencils. Uh -huh. There they are. Thank you. Right, so these are the negative parts. So I can paint off the sides of these. And get a shadow. I know there's quite a lot of cogs involved here, guys, but um, it's a very steampunky theme. It is. It is actually. So I think if I can hold them down there and get a clean brush. That's a bit too big. Yeah, please, that's what I'd really, really like. I'll just use this bit of paper to put some blue down on. I should really be using red, shouldn't I, to um to bring in those roses. Yeah, I think I should really. Thanks, that's grand. Thank you. I'll put the blue away. I'm not saying I put it away for the whole day though. I'm gonna go away just Oh, 
yet again, it's just an, an acrylic. And yet again, just use your cheap ones up because uh, you don't need, you know, you don't need light, fast, longevity, blah, blah, the whole nine yards. Right. So let's just see what this looks like. I'm just trying to introduce the same colour as that rose that we've got at the bottom of this page here. Just so it's not stranded. You don't want a stranded colour. Has Dorothy come back on? So there, let's have a look at that then. Oh, that's lovely. That is really lovely. I love it. Actually. Um, I've got this ginormous fella here. How about I put him in there? That would be good, I think. I'm sort of fading it off the off the edge, just using the pencil when it's got no paint on it to just build that outside up. Um, fade it off, basically. You can see as I'm running out of paint, it's just getting less and less. Okay. Oh yes, that's more like it. Right, I'll put that in there and hopefully don't need it again because it'll be soaking wet. Right, definitely now down to sticking these bits on. Let's see what's going where. That could go there quite nicely. If it does, I need to be colouring that underneath this part. We've got this. I'm going to put... Uh, yeah, I'm going for the blue. I can't conceive of a page without blue. 12 minutes past five. Oh, lordy. Well, we were quite late. I know. We've been streaming for 48 minutes. Right, got 10 minutes to get this done. It, it will happen. Don't panic. Right, I'm going to use my finger because very often you get the best smeary sort of results with a finger. See, that looks gorgeous with that copper, doesn't it? I'm not going to cover it all because then you won't see that nice brush hole that we put in first off. I'm just going to add little bits around the edge. Let's run into the red there, which is fine. It's fine by me. Let's just go over that bit of paper there. Yeah, actually, that's a reminder right there. We need to dress all this before we um, put our metal stuff on. Somehow you can't get this same look with a brush. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't happen with, with a brush. The same thing that happens with your finger. So this is kind of coming to life now. I'm beginning to really quite like it. I was, I was fully prepared not to like this because, as I say, it's kind of not my real sort of thing. Okay, I want that. Up. 
Right, I'll just wash my finger off a bit. Before we go anywhere else, I'm going to uh, transparent gesso all of this. Okay, so that's dry. I mean, it was a really thin uh, coat that I did. So you need a clean brush because otherwise um, your gesso won't be clear. So just give it a quick once over. As I said, it's sort of a save as. Now we can put anything we want on and everything under this will be safe you know it's not going anywhere you can put as much paint as much water whatever we like which is always good so you see Dorothy if you're watching this is what happens when you don't have a, a background uh, you know a textured background anyway um, you can get it to work, definitely. I, I kind of like texture myself and the effect that you can get with the paint over the top of it. Um, but you certainly don't have to do it at all. Right, I think that's about it. Right. Oh. So you just have to keep going and upload the video. Uh. Oh, do I? That's just been an awkward day today, hasn't it, with that? Right, now it's time to get the glue gun out and stick on our, our bits and pieces. We know for a fact that the key's going there. That's where the key's going. It looks really good there. So I'll just stick some glue on that. Really, when you're sticking metal down, a hot glue gun is your best option, really. Hold that for a minute or two till it adheres. We're back. Oh, we're back. <laughs> this has been a test for everybody today, hasn't it? Not least us. So that's going there. These these are going somewhere in conjunction with this. So I wonder if over there. No, over there looks nice. Is that there? I don't know really. I really don't know. Got a lovely light bulb. And our clock face. Is that it? Was that all we had? Yeah, I think so. Let's get them all stuck on. Um, what's going there then? Was I? Right, in that case then I'm going to sort of white that out a bit uh, and put that there. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, So what, what's everybody got to say about that? Look okay to everybody or not? Uh, Nancy would like is gesso like a top coat. Uh, it can work as a top coat, but it's it would work out as a very expensive top coat because it's it, it's got this 
it's invent it was made for fine art and what it is it's got uh, the white one is titanium white acrylic with something like talcum powder um or, or um calcium carbonate carbonate yeah baking soda i think you can put in it um and you get a tooth with it you know it's not it feels smooth but it's got this slight tooth in that um fine artists use to to cover um canvases sand it put it on sand it down put it on sand it down etc and you end up with a very very smooth finish which allows you to paint details um we use it for its priming quality and you're right the top the transparent gesso will act as a top coat but it's quite an expensive top coat because you're paying for the tooth in it i mean i can feel it there um you're better off using something like very chic matte finish or um any of the other you know any of the other finishing things that you can think of varnish even would be fine Right, so I need to do something about this. That looks Does it? Thank you. I love feedback. I love it. So I'm going to colour this in, and I think I'm going to do it in blue. <laughs> Mister, Mister Fix, it's laughing at me. Some kind of predictable sort of person. I only in as much as I love blue. I just do. Right, so I think that's fine. Let's just check that that still looks nice. Yeah, it does. So you're sort of going for the, the bits that are going to be next to the paper. Well, I'll take it from me. I've just stuck a load of glue on this. Right, I'm just going to hold that down until it adheres properly, until it cools down, really. Hot glue is the easiest thing in the world to catch your fingers with, and it doesn't have hurt. It's really, obviously, it's really hot. Uh, Chaz says, looks amazing, now you're going to use the webbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a funny thing that, oh, this is a double-sided clock. Clock face. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen anything until you've seen the webbing. The webbing's supreme. You know, a lot of people put splatters on their work, and I like splatters. I'm a splatter sort of person, actually. Um, but once you've seen this webbing, you'll never go back. Just a little bit of blue staying in there. I'm going to stick my light bulb on there. So it's more like a conglomeration of items, really, that have got to do with steampunk, but I really didn't want to go out and buy stamps and stuff because I know I'd never use them again. Some of these might not adhere the first time. It's you know, wouldn't surprise me if something dropped off. Sharon says it looks like you knocked it out of the park for you. Oh, that's really nice of you, Sharon. Thank you, my love. Um, I've got another one like this, but bigger. What is it? Oh, I made myself so angry losing all this stuff. It dragged it. Found it. Dirty bonkers. Right, that's definitely going there because I, I really like that. It's not the same as that. No, it's too close together. It's going to have to come down here. Although this page does look a bit heavy with stuff. What about up there? What about up there? What about up there? That looks good. And I'm going to do the shrinkable stuff with um, the glue gun as well. 
because it feels like um, plastic on the back. You know, quite rigid plastic. If I'm being honest with you, that's what it feels like. <laughs> um, Mr. Fixalot came downstairs before. Did you show them them? No, with uh, <laughs> obviously more more shrinkables. Honest to God, this house, it's a wonder it doesn't just well, burst at the seams. Packet. There's another pack of shrinkables there, and then they're there's. White. White yeah, we had white. That's it. And the, this one called Poly Shrink. Artist's grade shrink plastic. Artist's grade. The instructions are quite clear down the front. Fun for everyone. Yeah, and just tells you what to do. list of medium you can use. All right. Uh, markers, coloured pencils, chalk pastels, chalk pastels, mm. stamping inks, other inks and paints, highlighting mediums, sealers. So, including rub and buff. Including rub and buff. It's amazing it's stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've stuck that on, no. I just want to bite into there a little bit. Just hold that down for a sec. You know what? I'm really liking this page, which is quite surprising, actually. Oh, I'm burning the towel. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. Before I forget, I need to say something. Susan Hole, I am so sorry for you. I can't believe that you've done that when you want to be cracking on with an art journal. And I know you'd make a lovely job of it as well. So use the time to get everything together, get round your charity shops and everywhere else um, and, and get a good, a good supply of stuff that you need to start your art journal with. Um, she's got, she's torn and bruised all the, her, her wrist and her hand. She's got it in a really heavy bandage. I know. Down she fell day. down. That's what she did oh, when she fell down the rabbit hole. Because oh, right. she's not actually Alice in Wonderland. Right. Okay. Um, is it ready for the spray? For the. I've done the key. Done that. Done that. Done that. Done that. Yeah, I think we're ready for the Krylon. Yeah. This works best. At about 10 feet away. <laughs> you have to kind of do it sideways on. I'm giving it to Mr. Fix It because you need to get right over there to do it. So it'll appear screen left. Yeah, it'll just appear. <laughs> it will just appear. Make sure that you've got anything um, that you want out the way, out the way, because it might land on it. But it is, it's fantastic stuff. You'll love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. That's enough already. That hasn't come out quite as webby as it normally does. Um, yeah, okay, well, it is what it is. It usually comes out much finer web. If I did it in a complete thing, it probably would. But you know what I mean, I'm doing it in spurts. All right. Well, anyway, that's it. We finished. That's it for the. Day. I'm just going to put a bit. I'm not finished at all yet. I'm just going to put a little bit of charcoal around the edge here. Uh, charcoal's nice because you can you can uh, blend it in. So we're going to have a really nice. Are you, you doing a demonstration? Yeah. If you want webby, you yeah. Put that all there. Oh, I didn't glue this on. I thought there was something you'd missed. Yeah. Right, so demonstration of the web. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it looks like. How blooming cool is that? Can you imagine if you put like a sort of slightly marbled colour underneath and then you so put that on? Yeah, go for silver. It's not cheap as stuff, but it's... It's nice. And it is Krylon. It's yeah, the Krylon stuff isn't cheap. We don't use much of it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so you've really got to keep it moving. Put some silver on here, it might lighten it up a bit. Just one burst of it. Yeah, looky, looky. Now that's really cheered my page up. Therefore, really cheered me up. <laughs> that's literally the last thing I'm doing is just going around the edge with this uh, charcoal pencil. Yeah, the envelope was lovely. You kind of need charcoal for this. You can do it with pastel pencils if you want. Um, charcoal is a perfect medium for smudging. And it's nice to have a heavy border, or a darker border, should I say, around the edge of your journal. You seem to love your webbing. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a world shortage of webbing. No, I'm not that important. That's just daydreaming there. But it is really, really... Oh, I just put that one there. <laughs> just placed it. Now it's gone all... You've cryloned it. I'm, I am going to stick that on, you understand. I think seeing as the page is quite dark, we've got that dark webbing on it, it's quite good to put this uh, charcoal around the edge. It's in keeping. I've thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing that. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I'm just going to stick this thing on. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> where did I have it? There. No, over, over here. Was it here? That's where you placed it, but I mean, where that's where you wanted it. Oh, yeah, that is where I placed it. Yes, that is where I wanted it. <laughs> 10 out of 10 for observation there. So just a bit of glue on the back. Put it over there, like that. Just hold it down for a sec. So I hope you've enjoyed it. There are loads of more things that I could have done with this. I could have gone over all these metal things with rub and buff. Um, you know, you could use different colours, whatever, highlight different things. But I do actually think that we've we've done okay. I think we've done okay. I'm quite pleased with that. It's something totally different um, to anything that I would normally ever do. So, there we are, guys. I'm having the day off tomorrow because it's cricket, it's the ashes, and I really want to watch that. And I will, and there's Paula's Paint a Pint at one o'clock over on Fairy Chic Emporium tomorrow. Don't forget that. It's always a good laugh. Sharon was just asking if the uh, Krylon comes in. Different colours, but it comes in three that I'm aware of. Right. Silver, gold, and what they call black lava. Right. The one I've only ever had that. <coughs> excuse me. The silver and the black, and the one I've used more than anything else is the black. Um, this was just. It it's a bit closer together these strands than it usually is. It's usually just really. Yeah, like like the. Like the envelope that we showed you it's more usually more like that um but i still like it it hasn't wrecked it or anything so yeah get yourself some krylon give it a try okay thank you really 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 very much for sticking with us through the false start and blah blah everything thank you very much honestly you're a great crew you really really are and i will see you again on Monday. It's a long time, isn't it? Well, we may pop up. I may pop up. If any of you want me to pop up, then I will give it consideration. Or the cricket gets rained off. Yeah, the cricket gets rained off. Yeah. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Enjoy your day, your evening, whatever it is, and thanks for spending some time with me. Bye.